Coming to you from a wrong turn off Route 66. Somewhere in the Sonoran Desert, it's James Out West, featuring Ryan Rooks. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, James Out West, as always, here with Ryan Rooks. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. How you doing? Good. Good. It is Saturday, June 26, 2021. Good week. Good week. Fun week. Yeah, it was. Um, 100% was. As far as week. especially sports-wise, where, where I'm going with this. Well, I can touch on that, too. I went on a little oh, wait. three-day vacation. Yes. While we were gone in Coronado, seems like everybody from Phoenix was also in Coronado. <laughs> because I watched that epic game two of the Suns with Jay Crowder and the, the Valley Oop, as it's being known, which I do believe Scott Van Pelt came up with. Uh, that was amazing. That that pass from Crowder was, and we can, we can get absolutely that. get into that. But getting to watch it, and we were in a very small little restaurant bar at the hotel. And when she saw there was like two or three people there, but Teresa was like, "Okay, you don't need to be very loud. You know, we're on vacation. These people." The place erupted with like two minutes left as the game was going on. She just looked at me. I go, "Is it okay that we cheer?" She's like, "What are you talking about?" I go, "Do you see all these Phoenix people?" At the Dell. Everybody Coronado. was there at the Dell. Because you know why? Because it was a beautiful 68 degrees, my it's friend. too hot. Everybody wants out, right? Yeah. Now. Well, and our state is on fire. So if you get a chance to get out, get out. Yeah. And why not go to the Dell Coronado? Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's awesome. Like, I, I think there, there was a lot, like I said, I think with uh, football. Yeah. Kind of. Have you seen anything about this tight end university? I love it. I love the fact that they're actually putting something like this together to help pass down the information, give the wisdom on, help them become better at their position, take pride in that position, because guess what? They start doing those things, and everybody's lead. Everybody gets paid. Well, and they said that they tight ends are – they don't get the respect. Bro, I've been using tight ends – in Madden since its inception and just people are just now catching up to me and Bill Belichick as far as who uses tight ends because that's how I went in Madden yes I did compare myself to Bill Belichick yes I did okay wow in the Madden space (laughs) from a standpoint of building my franchises my friend I don't know how (laughs) oh my gosh I can't believe you just did that Um, but but I think I love it it's I don't know if you've seen any of the, uh, the videos but Kittle and Kelsey are actually like they they care they're teaching they're sitting there and they're like cussing at them it was awesome and I love it. I think it's amazing. They're showing them the right things. They're doing it on their own. Mm-hmm. They created this. They did this whole thing. It has nothing to do with the NFL, but they want to grow the sport. They want to grow that position. I love it. Um, so did you hear that uh, in 2022, the NFL is going to allow throwback helmets? Alternative helmets. Yes. yes. So they have to wear them on the same, what is it, the rush week? Where, where Probably the rush week, yeah. yeah. So kind of cool i saw a couple of them which i'll i will look forward to i almost called them san diego the los angeles chargers their throwback helmet yes. sweet one of, one of the, yeah one of the best. um i love the throwback helmet of the bears depending on which one they use because they have a bunch of them uh i like the throwback of the seahawks yeah the old yeah um the old tampa bay the old yes. new england yes you know those There's, are nice i like the buffalo bills now the old one's nice too the white with just the red buffalo now the Browns don't have an alternative helmet, quote unquote, but we do because back when they first first started and they had these, mm-hmm. they were white. Yeah, See, I mean, it's the so same I thing. think they're going to roll with white unis with a white helmet. It's the same thing for us. Like we had that Forty Nine er logo, like the actual guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I mean, this, this has always been our helmet. So I, I agree. So, but. Who knows? Maybe That's going to be awesome. Get, I'm maybe, excited maybe for it. Maybe they'll get creative. I'm excited um, for it. And we'll see with our teams if we get anything or not. And then have you seen the different rules? So if you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, and they're coming out saying it's gonna, you're going to get treated differently. Yeah, 100%. And it was like 63% of the NFL players have gotten vaccinated. That's so correct. Far. So that's going to be interesting. And we also find out, or by July 2nd, if you're going to opt out. Right. If you're not well, I think a lot of players that opted out last year learned that, that unless, now, I don't want to speak for all of them because they all have their own reasons, and some of them still probably, Correct. most of them maybe, I don't even put a number on it, I'd imagine that of the group that did, some of them would still make that same decision if they had to go back, but also some of them would not. 
Yeah. Some of them would have played when they saw how the season progressed. All of that has to do with family, religious, whatever it might be. Um, And I'm okay with either way. If this is what they want to do, listen, they got through a full season last year with COVID protocols and the players that did it know how it goes. If their stance is they don't want to get the vaccine, which they don't have to, and they'll go through the protocols, then so be it. The concern will be those guys that are 52, 53, 51, 50 of making the team. How are they going to be able to, what if they don't believe in getting the shot how are they going to be able to stand up to that? Is that easily to be replaced? Because maybe somebody down there that got the shot can be a part of practice more and things like that. It is going to separate, and it's, going to it's be- tough to use the word discriminate, but to an extent, it will discriminate those that yeah. are versus aren't. Every- might not be the right term, but you know what I'm saying. Yes, no, totally. And every situation is going to be different, and every team is going to be different. They're going to treat it differently. I, I think, personally, everybody's allowed to their own opinion. Don't judge Agreed. on it because this is crazy. Um Nobody knows. But, but there are going to be certain things, and as long as you're okay with the rules, and we got through it last year, even though we had to change a couple of things, then run with it. Yeah, agreed. But that's up to you. Um, and then now have you heard that uh, there's going to be bids that each team can make for where the draft is going to be? So the draft, or excuse me, that's where the draft, where the combine is going to be. This well, makes me so, sad. So we do this with the draft. And with the Super Bowl already. But for it's been in Indy since 1987. Yes. So now they're bidding, which I think it's interesting that they're actually using that term. What do you think about that? I think it's a slap in the face to what the combine has been, has become, why it is what it is. To be in Indianapolis, which is basically an eight-hour drive from like more than half of every NFL team. So they can converge on it. They have all the facilities available from that using Lucas so, so. Days, No, no, no it does. It matters in the sense of like everything is right there. They have walkways that get you from where the combine is held over to all the hotels where the kids stay to where everybody stays so to the restaurants. No, 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 no. More than half of the teams. No, not like this. I know Jerry's building something where he's got the medical facilities right there. But this also isn't just about the players at the Combine. This is also about the other 32 teams that get together. And when you have that conglomerate of all those restaurants that have been doing it forever that yes. shut down the city, they close the city for this. Yeah, okay. Okay. But they make I a think, ton of money. It's like... Yeah. So what they're going to do is they're going to say, hey, you guys can add... This is all about the dollar. This is not yes, about the betterment 100%. of the league. No, this isn't about the betterment of the league no, whatsoever. I don't believe they should have moved it. This is a mistake, just like it's a mistake to move the Pro Bowl from Hawaii. Because guess what? If you're not going to Hawaii for the Pro Bowl, nobody effing wants to go. Great. I get to play in Orlando. Oh Fantastic. I did spike it. Trash. Oh, okay, so rant of the day of Mr. James. It's brought to you by Corona <laughs> Extra. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But Drink it, responsibly. See, it, it is about money. And, sir, it is 2021. Things are changing. It is not going to be the same old rules. Same thing with baseball and their old rules, the unwritten rule. Right. So things are changing. So um, I'm ready to get into some basketball. For sure. Boy, game so, three was uh, heartbreaking for the Phoenix Suns. That was crazy. Well, first off, game two, we see Booker get his nose broken in three different spots. Patrick Beverly is a piece of work. Didn't do it on purpose, though. I did not uh, believe the headbutt was on purpose. I don't, I don't believe the headbutt was on purpose. But he, the way he plays, he's... Oh, he plays on the fringe of dirtiness. No. Yeah. But he plays aggressive. I don't like him as a... Like, he's one of those guys, you know, it's, it's it becomes such a cliche. You don't like him. You hate him if he's not on your team, but you love him if he was right. on your team. There's a lot of people that don't like him that he's, that he's on their team, but he gets... He does just what is needed to get the job done, hence why he's still in the league. Get it. No, I mean, that's... A six-foot-one point guard with no jump shot doesn't make it in the league unless you can do something spectacular. It's and that's his defense and his little yippiness. With Draymond Green, I love him, but he's on my Warriors. So I get it. Richard no, Sherman. exactly. And I hated when he came to the Niners because I did not like him because of his chippiness. But you get it. I understand. Just don't like, don't like the, the way... He plays. Um, so we heard Jason Kidd got the, the Mavs job, which I think is awesome. Right. Full and, circle. Yeah, full circle. And then the GM is Nico Harrison and Nike exec mm-hmm. who helped partner, He's been who helped the transition from Luca being Nike to becoming Team Jordan Nike. Yep. And the fact that there's that relationship there. Mark Cuban is a trailblazer, a trendsetter. 
thinks outside the box, brought a guy in who's been a successful. I mean, I guess you can call Jason Kidd was a semi-successful NBA head coach in his last two stops with the Nets and with the Bucks, specifically with the Bucks. Um, bringing this guy in, bringing a perspective where, guess what? Now nobody is married to, besides Mark Cuban, is married to the idea of having to keep Porzingis and Luka together. Oh, yeah. I wanted the it's, unicorn to be great. I thought those two would be something, but it shows so not, far that Porzingis is not that guy. He's yeah. seven foot three, plays like he's six three, a timid six that three. Injury can't hurt have him it. Way too much. It, uh, it hurt his mentals, and it, guess what? It's going to hurt his chickens next. Well, there's. I mean, you could even say that. Like, what's up with Simmons? Like, this kid did not want to shoot the ball. Right. They. He. he it's his. It's all mental. It seems. It's, it's got to be. You know, is it the yips? Can you have the yips if you never had a jump shot to begin with? Like, I don't... I don't know, but he's not going to be on Philly next year. They're, where does he go? Who I trades for him? because he has a huge salary. It's for the He's going to end up with a bad years. team. He'll end up with some bad team that'll absorb somebody it because they have somebody's name. Yep. I just hope it's not the Warriors. Um, they No, they have a smart front office. Yes, but I heard... So, no. I got an alert that they were talking. And well, I, I don't know why. I, I don't... What are you going to do with that? Fake news. That's what I'm saying. Um, and then Billups looks like he's going to be the uh, Portland Trailblazers. Which I really thought it was going to end up being Becky Hammond. Got to be honest. I really thought that she was going to be. She had the, a second or third interview. Yep, I thought she was going to be. I thought the Trailblazers were going to trailblaze and hire the first woman head coach in M NBA history. But instead, they decided to go with Chauncey, Chauncey Billups, Billups, Mr. Big Shot. He's. We'll see. You never. I mean. Has he been in coaching before? Um, he's been on TV know. since he retired. I feel like, but he was a smart. He has oh, he's a very smart guy. IQ, so and that, all these guys have shown. Matters. Look at what so, Steve Nash has shown. Yes. These guys have shown they can yes, come Steve in. Nash, Steve Kerr right. never been a head coach. Can come in and be successful if you got the right guys. If you have the right stuff. He'll have Dame. He has CJ. They've got pieces in place. We'll yeah. see. If good luck. Dame stays there. Yeah, let's see. Good luck. Um, but she'll get a job. She will. Yep. There, there's still what three or four more openings, I believe. Um, so. I would expect she's she's now probably one of the top two. Yeah, I'd be curious to see who, she who was decides to do this. Amazing! I love the way she coached. I don't know if you ever saw any yep. videos with, with, with San Antonio, but mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so right now in the series, we are two one. Suns are playing tonight. Suns are up. Yeah, right? two one. Okay. Kawhi's out. Kawhi's out. Again, Kawhi's not playing again until next year. But they're going to keep feeding this so they don't it have that devastation motivation. Yeah, and then we got Bucks Hawks one one. The Bucks came back Hawks in a vicious fashion. So good game one, mm -hmm. and then Trey looked like he was scared as can be. That defense shut him down. They finally figured two. out an adjustment. We'll see if now is it going to the chess up? game continues. Yeah, uh, so obviously back to Atlanta now. So it we'll see. Listen, Atlanta did what they were supposed to do. They split yeah. on the road. That's what they're supposed to do. Now they have to defend home. We'll see what happens. That series feels more to me like it would go six or seven than this series. I don't no, think I that the Suns Clippers game. Listen, about to get into my X Files bit here, the little little conspiracy theory here. But if you look at the free throw discrepancy, if you look at from the jump of game three, these reps were going to make sure that it was going to go the LA Clippers way. To call three offensive fouls on Devin Booker in a span of about 245 when two of them were blatantly not offensive calls. Yeah. Now, granted, he played poor, and that might have been getting used to the mask, Chris Paul being back, getting his legs, but they weren't taking the same shots they were, they were taking in, in the first two games. They weren't passing the ball like they were. There was no rebounding. And so, they got behind early and couldn't hit the shots or stop them. When Pat Bev is dropping back-to-back -back threes, when Ray, Reggie Jackson's dropping back-to-back -back threes, they're going to win games. Guess what, though? That does not happen very often. Okay, so what happened is Chris Paul coming back, as good as he is, he's still a little rusty, mm -hmm. but he also is going to command the ball a little bit more than Booker was having the ball all the time. Yep. Booker's been on a run. Mm -hmm. So... When now, all of a sudden, you put on one of those masks, and not only putting that on, but actually playing an entire game, trying to mm -hmm. shoot when you're a three-point shooter, I'm that's sure it's going difficult. to change the game. Right. So the, the mixture of those two, certain people not hitting their shots, and then, um, uh, what's his name that, that went out? Oh, my gosh. Oh, um, um, Payne. Yes, Payne. Like, he was on a roll, too. So it was a huge mixture. I do not see this going more than five or six. Yeah. Um, Bucks-Hawks is going to be interesting. I think Milwaukee's the better team, but 
the Hawks are the more scrappy team. Mm-hmm. So it's a fun. I, I, yeah, it's a good series. It's so interesting watching these teams. I would normally never never watch yeah. watch this, but um, okay. So let's get into a little bit of uh, Major League. So you've been noticing uh, pitchers been pulling down their pants lately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that? I have. And you know what? They should be. And they should be just showing their ass to these people because it is ridiculous what these managers are doing right now in baseball. It's not. It should be where they lose like a timeout. Like they lose something. You know, yesterday I was talking with some friends and they mentioned, you know what they should do? If you do that and they have nothing on them, uh, there should be a man on second. Yeah, there's got to be something that it. That'll can't stop you from being an asshole. Excuse my language, to, ladies and gentlemen. To, but Yeah, I mean. Sergio Romo from the A's literally like started yeah, to pull his pants. And then, um, what was it? We had Scherzer. Scherzer. And then, did you see with Bryce Harper, they checked his hair because he sa- they were saying that he has so much sticky Products, stuff in yeah. his hair that he could use that. Like, it was like such a weird thing. So they're Is literally, he a they're, no. <laughs> no, I know. No, so I'm saying, no, like, what are we they're doing? They're literally rubbing their hands through his hair. And it's like, what is that's creepy it is look it's, it's, and just like my was saying look what fred baseball look what tatis jr is doing again yesterday three home runs in the first four innings after he said he wasn't going to be in the home run derby and then incredible first in three incredible events. Yes. look what otani's doing yes. you have all this amazing stuff going on in baseball and what does manford do like my buddy said, pulled out a shotgun and just blew the whole damn thing up it's, because why would you get on them about this it's been an unwritten rule for 60 years now granted i agree Spider Tech has no business in the game. And pr- but rosin and sweat and sunscreen and things of that nature, I want the guy that can throw 100 miles an hour to know where the hell it's going. Knee-jerk reaction to this whole pitching with, they, are they going to move the mound back? There, so many strikeouts are up, so many no-hitters, so many perfect games. It's all up. So it's, they swung the pendulum way too far. Yep. And they're not making the right decision. They'll, baseball doesn't. Isn't known for making right decisions. Never. Well, especially with this this uh, commissioner, who I would say is probably the worst commissioner in all of sports in the last 25 years, and that includes the NHL, and I know they had a bad one. I don't know in the last 25 years, but as of right now. He called yes. their championship trophy a piece of metal. Oh, my gosh. He's ruining the game single-handedly by putting this ridiculous stuff going on right He's- now. Did not even punish any of the players who got caught cheating and won a World Series in the Houston Asterix. Okay, so yeah, Manfred stinks. Okay, just saying, he stinks. That was two. I got two rants out of you today. Oh man, I'm I'm learning. Yes, I'm growing. You're getting there. Okay. Um, so speaking of bad decisions and stinking, have you seen what just happened to North Car- uh, Carolina State? Does Manfred run college baseball too? No, because he would make the same decision. <laughs> so. NC State was supposed to play Vanderbilt today. Yes, sir. And they had, I think, 13 players. So they weren't allowed to play, even though you only need nine. The NCAA made the decision to cancel the game because so many players with COVID and gave Vanderbilt. No way, non-decision. Yep. So now they're going to the College World Series. Right. And they're going to play either, what is it, Texas and Mississippi State. Yep, and it'll be probably Mississippi State. Mississippi State's pretty pretty good. But, yeah. North, like, NC State was a good team. Very good. They easily could have been in this game. It was. And it, <laughs> the top 10 on ESPN was the left fielder, or excuse me, the right fielder, making a diving catch from the game before. Yeah. Nope. That's, that's just. That's, again, when big brain whites get in the way. It's, it's, I'm making this decision for the betterment of what? I get there's certain restrictions. you got to follow rules. I understand. Some of these rules are arbitrary. Hey, i got to wear a mask well, while I'm on the sideline, but we can breathe on each other for 48 minutes, but then I can't shake your hand afterwards unless we're in a mask. And it's so different because just like um, what was it Coach K said, it's all committees. Let's stop with the dang committees. He's right about that. And when you have a committee that can make this decision – it's not fair to that senior player. No, it's not. Who or somebody who could have had a chance to be seen on a. It's not like they had eight players left. They had nine. Yes, they they had, had enough. It's like basketball saying you can't play. Well, doesn't matter. We have five. And if you let them play, and if they can't finish or they get to their then, pitch count, okay. then yes, okay, we have to forfeit. Let them play the game. Yep. Ah, uh, 
That got you that, play to win <laughs> the game. Yes. That got me a little bit. Uh, I, I think that's just so frustrating. I feel so bad for those kids. Um, but it is what it is, I guess. Uh, yeah. So we'll uh, know some things by next week as far as basketball wise. Yeah, Bravo. we should know who's going to be playing each other, have a good idea for the. F- Here's what we do know obviously, someone's going to win a championship for maybe the first time. Clippers never won, Suns never won. Uh, Milwaukee. Atlanta's never won. Milwaukee's a one. Milwaukee They've has won they before, won, but it's been a long time. So unless it's you know the one's last time they were in the finals, the Clippers never. Oh, the, Suns the, been forever. Is, I mean, this is, is unchartered water but for a lot of these teams. It's awesome. Good players though. They're, they're exciting players to watch. I mean, on every team, there is at least one, if not two players, or three or four players that like I'm excited to watch. I've been watching every minute of every game. It, I love Atlanta it. feels like Phoenix Suns light. I mean, they have Trey, and they have some supporting cast, but they don't have this. But they play like a team, and they play scrap, and they're all in for one another. They're still young. You know? The Suns are still very young, minus Chris Paul. Like, but, Chris Paul brings the age up as far as the average, but everybody on this team is young. Crowder's uh, DA's 22. Right. Like, some of these guys are young. Right, but... Paint, you're you right, Crowder. Good, you have a good balance, but you also have guys that it's not their first... And like, the European... Year playing, second year playing... Zarchik. The European Zarzik, is that his last name? I'm probably saying it wrong. I don't think you're saying it right. That's what I'm saying. I'm probably saying Yerchik? it wrong. There you go. Thank you. He plays year-round, basically. Because when he leaves here, he goes and plays for his yeah. national team, which is the other six months. Like, he plays basketball year-round. So the miles and the experience that that cat has, it may not be at the NBA championship level, but high-level games, you can count on guys like him, and that's what they need. That's like Luca. Um, it's... I mean, which is why he is who he is. You can even say that about Ball when he, you know, he traveled absolutely in high school. Like, there's a lot to the international game that I think is a, and not it's changed. better for everybody, but is better for and a, it's changed a good in the last baller. thirty years because remember the Europeans just come over and they just couldn't hang. There'd be like one or two that were good, but they weren't great. Not anymore. It'll be interesting if we're going to start seeing more and how young people can get into the G League. Um, or the overtime league, or whatever it is. Well, it's the G League, whatever. They, oh, no, they have two, right? There's another one called the overtime league, and they yeah. pay kids. So, with what they can build, are we going to draw international players from that? And then is yeah. it going to get better? So then that's yeah. going to be interesting. But oh, I love basketball. It's got me back why. in. I'm back in. Yes, I'm all the way back. I did it. I'm all the way back. Well, they did it, but you helped. Oh, okay. Well, rally the valley got me back in. You got grayer and longer. This is true. But it finally happened. Yep. I'm back. We're there. The sun stink. Or the uh, the cat. The sun stink. <laughs> oh I'll be saying that next year. Way to the ca- <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Completely <laughs> turn to go real. Uh, the calves stink. Yeah. But we won our championship. Yeah. I'm excited. They, they're never on TV, and I don't pay for the package. I'll watch the Suns. I'll watch whoever's on TNT Tuesdays. I like Ernie, Chuck, and the boys. I like listening to Shaq. It's been good games. I yeah. like it. It's been entertaining. I, I, As I, always. So, it, it's... It's what you live for. It is what you live for. Not you, but, but... Well, a lot of people. I'm back into it. Like I said, I'm back into basketball. Okay. I'll take it. Anything else, my homie? No. I mean, game four is tonight, 6 p.m. I can't stand the fact that it's on ESPN because I got to listen to those nonsense. They are the no. worst halftime show. They are There are okay no. announcers, but give me TNT. Yeah. All day long. I agree. That's it, though. Okay. My hate for ESPN still exists, even though I'm on their website. It's a love-hate because they have to give me the information. So instead of doing a story, we got three rants today. Could get four. We keep going, so you might want to shut this off. Yeah, okay. All right, bro. All right, have a good week. Later. All right, one love.